Radio Raheem with the magic man, Pauli Malignaggi. And we're out here in D.C., man. Now, the end of the fight, we saw Floyd climb in the ring and say that, once again, boxing is corrupt. He feels like Badu Jock got robbed. How did you see it? I thought he got robbed clearly. There, there, you can't look at that fight two ways. There's only one way you can see in that fight. There's, you can't make a case for a draw. You can't make a case for... Uh, uh, even a uh, Lucian Boutte win. Usually when it's a draw, you can make a case of both guys winning. You can't make a case for anything but a Badu Jack win in that fight. So, I mean, it's disappointing, man. How do these guys get jobs? You know, and you know that these guys are going to get hired again at some point. You know what I mean? So, I mean, there, sh there shouldn't be any two ways to, about the way you handle these situations. If, if, if you make that much of a mistake, if in fact it is a mistake, you shouldn't be working. Not, not, not a fight to this level anyway, you know? Now there's two judges that saw the fight exactly the same way with a wide margin. I mean, what what do you credit with? You can't even tell me like, oh, you know what, my seat is better, dude. I'm I'm sitting at ringside too. Yo, that that fight was one sided as it comes. You know what I mean? Like, did Lucian close strongly? Yeah, I thought Lucian could have even possibly got the last three rounds. You know, maybe he got one in between that. I mean, four rounds the most. I mean, Badu controlled all the rounds. I was, I don't know, man. I don't know. What do you think about Medina and uh, you know I, I uh, thought, Degault? I thought the Gale won, but. It, if you had a, that fight a draw or even a win for Medina, I wouldn't tell you you're totally wrong. You know what I mean? Like I thought the get won it, but it was a very difficult fight, and and there's you can you can definitely make a case for Medina in a, in a lot of rounds, and it, you know that was a fight where maybe you could have gave it a draw and you wouldn't be totally off. You know what I mean? But right. the main event, I mean, I don't know. Maybe they 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 switch the judges for the for the scorecards for the fights. I don't know, man. I'm still confused. Now we're here in D.C., but back home, at least for me in in, in Los Angeles and your former home at some time. Guys in your division battling it out. A little grudge yeah, match. Yeah. I'm not sure if you got the results of that. I saw the results, yeah. I, I, I didn't really see much else uh, yet. You know, I saw a couple of highlights, but I heard there was a lot of knockouts on that card tonight. So a lot of when, I get, when I get back to the house tomorrow, I'm going to check it out. Did you happen to see the stoppage, the end of the fight? I, I didn't. I heard there's some controversy about, you know, whether Ortiz quit again or not. I'm not sure. You know, I, I really, I'm not in a position to, to judge what happened until I, I see it myself. But I, I certainly want to see it. I'm certainly curious. Now, you're closer to the fights than most, and obviously you and Mayweather are friends, so everybody's questions on everybody's mind. What do you think personally? You think we're going to see a Mayweather comeback? You know, somebody once told me, a very intelligent man once told me, there's no such thing as extra money. There's no sh so if that's the case, Floyd Mayweather comes back. <laughs> now what about Paulie Malignaggi? There's probably still money on the table for you. If there is, I'll consider it too, you know. You know what it is with me, man? I'm sick of making weight. I'm sick of making weight, man. I'm so sick of it. But, you know, if it's worth my while, of course, uh, you know, I, 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 bite my, I bite down and, and do the work. But uh, we'll see. Well, you know, with Floyd being gone, uh, Manny's now officially gone, the debate about who's pound for pound best rages on. Who do you think fills that spot in this void? For me, it's Andre Ward. You know, he's got the resume, he's got the big names, uh, and uh, he continues to show what he is and what he's made of, uh, both as a character, as a man, as an athlete, as a sportsman, and as a very skilled fighter as well. Now, he's new to the 175 division. Obviously, the Kovalev fight looms. How would you see that fight playing out? It's a very tough fight. It's really, Kovalev is no slouch himself. So very tough fight. You know, it's a it's a fight Andre could very well lose. Uh, it's a high risk fight, but again, you see the character of the man. He's not backing away from it. He's going at it. You know, in just a week, I'm going to go straight to Vegas from here. I'm sure you won't be far behind. What do you think about uh, Canelo and Khan? Is, is is that a better fight than people give it credit for? You know, I think Khan has the tools to give Canelo trouble, but weight classes exist for a reason. You know, and and I just don't know that the, the weight disparity, no matter what they end up weighing on the scale, I don't care. You know what I mean? It, it's where they've been campaigning at for the large part of their career. I think it, it makes it very difficult for Khan to, to do what he wants to do uh, effectively against Canelo. I think he will be effective in some spots because he has the tools to give Canelo trouble. But I think the weight disparity will eventually get him knocked out uh, but we'll see you know uh, you know it's two big names so on paper people will watch it I'll be there I'm working it with uh, BBC radio uh, for uh, for the Brits so I'll be there as well so you feel like Khan's got a shot but you're still giving Canelo the edge you're picking Canelo I can't see Khan having much of a shot because I can't see Canelo uh, Khan Khan stopping him and I can't see Khan reaching the 12 round distance without getting clipped at some point. And Khan does not the best of survivors when he's hurt. So especially when you have a guy who's physically bigger than you, where when you're hurt, you can't even really hold him because he's he's going to be physically big enough to just throw you off of him and continue to, to assault you. So, uh, I, I, I just, I don't know, man. Like I said, I can I see Khan having the skills to have some moments, you know, for as long as he lasts. But I just don't see that. Uh, I just don't see him. I just see him being worn out, you know. You know, you, you mentioned the uh, weight classes, and other than the judging, one of the biggest complaints in boxing now is the way people play with weights and belts. 
Canelo is middleweight champion, and he's never fought at 160, yeah. 160 pounds, yeah. the middleweight weight. First of all, do you have a problem with that? Do you think that that's, yeah. that's a problem? Yeah, because a middleweight, there are middleweights, you know, when I'm making a certain weight, I can't get five pounds less than my weight class. You know, so there's middleweights that are never going to be able to fight for the middleweight title because they can't make 155 pounds. They can make 160 pounds. You know, so so how do you, you know, you're never going to defend the title against a real middleweight. You know, I've, I fight at 147 pounds. I cannot make 142 pounds. If I can make 142 pounds, I will be fighting at 140 pounds. You know what I mean? So, so there are no middleweights really. I'll be shocked if there's middleweights that can really make 155 pounds. I mean, you're fighting at 160 pounds because you cannot make the next weight class lower. If you could make the next weight class lower, you'd make that weight class. So, you know, I, I think it's a shame. Listen, I understand it from a business perspective. I get it. But, you know, from a fan perspective and from a boxing, respect, boxing purity perspective, you know, it can't be that the middleweight title will never be contested at 160 pounds again. I mean, it's, something's got to change over here. You know, it's obvious that Canelo, it's not about making 160. He can make that weight. It's, it's no, silly. Canelo can make 160 pounds. I'm saying, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't want to make 160 pounds. I mean, right. it's, making weight as far as gaining it is easy. It's losing the weight that's the problem. So then why Middleweights you, cannot get five pounds less than the, than the limit. Right. So then why do you think he doesn't want to make 160, doesn't want to make the Triple G fight? Of course, it's a difficult fight. I mean, you know, it's, 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 you know he's maybe he's trying to milk it and, and eventually he'll make it. I don't know. You know, I mean, listen. If, when you have the 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 pull Canelo has, because you command a lot of the money, money money talks, bullshit walks, right? I mean, when you when you command the money, you can make those kind of decisions. You can dictate, but you'd like to see eventually 160 pounds happen. We'll see. And lastly, Paulie, uh, Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, a fight everybody's looking forward to. Break that down for me. I think it's a very physical fight. Uh, you know, I, I think Thurman is the more talented guy, but Porter has a way of uh, disrupting the more talented fighters a lot of times. Uh, I think between Thurman. Porter, Spence, and Brooke, you have some real physical welterweights. You've got real welterweights who've never campaigned a super lightweight. These are really the meat of the welterweight division and, and really the powerhouses of the welterweight division. And, uh, you know, they're legitimate welterweights, and uh, they're, they're going to be, uh, be something harsh to deal with. Who's your pick in that fight? It's hard. It's hard. You know, Thurman's the better fighter, but I wouldn't be shocked if Porter upsets him. Uh, it's a hard to pick. I really I, I don't know that there's a, a right or wrong answer for that. Of those four guys you just mentioned, who's the best uh, welterweight? For me, it's Kel Brook. Although, you know, it, things can still change one, one fight to the next. They're both elite level. Uh, for me, it's Kel Brook. He's already got a win over one of them, uh, uh, who is uh, Sean Porter. But, but for me, those, uh, th those are the top guys. And uh, for me, Kel Brook's the best. But we'll see. Polly, always willing to break it down. Never at a loss for words. I appreciate talking to you every time, man. Radio Rahi with the magic man, Polly Malanaji.